Hey guys, it's CJ9899, and I bring you a test and quick overview of my new Edwards Quick Start. Okay, so first off, I just want to say that sorry I've been gone for a while. I was away on vacation in Europe, and uh, when I got back, I had to do a bit of catching up on uh, school, but now I have some free time, so I figured I'd show off this panel which uh, I actually received a couple days ago from Canadian Alarms and he, I will be sending him another panel in return so stay tuned for that on his channel. So basically, so I'm sure a lot of people here are, from, are familiar with the Edwards Quick Start but um, there are a few things about this particular one that I have that may be different from say we're just going to use an example say the SDX's Quick Start and when he went over it this one does have quite a few differences. Um, First off, this one is actually a Canadian quick start um, in the sense that it has this um, little door or fold down door kit um, which basically gives it this door. It's just a ring that if you take the CPU off you can just take that whole door off and it also has the LED enunciation modules which are programmed correctly and as you can see it is showing system normal QS demo system and I wiped the alarm history. This pan, this CPU is a good one. It's uh, it's it's probably not gonna fail. It's really only because I have two devices on the system, so it's just I, I always feel the less devices you have, the um the longer it's gonna last. Also, the less you use it, and this won't be plugged in all the time. It's just on a demo board if I want to take it somewhere. Um, but. This is, again, this is a QS4 CPU model, so basically that means it is the, it's the highest level um, CPU, which means it can be both conventional and addressable. I think it can have up to four SLCs and 48 zones, if I'm not mistaken. So let's take a look at the inside. It's got the older EST logo. All right. So you may notice that this is in fact a conventional model. Yes, um, the one that I originally got, or this Quick Start actually did originally did not have this CPU. It actually originally had this one. It had this uh, conventional style uh, CPU, and uh, it's not that this CPU failed or anything. I just kind of like the bigger screen one as opposed to this one. But if this one were to fail, I would just replace it with this one. But uh, yeah, this one has some modules on it too. But this is the conventional Quick Start CPU with the smaller screen. But this is the QS4, so it can support the, the conventional. This is a 16 zone card, but technically it's supposed to be, um, or it is 12 zones and 4 NACs because the last 4 zones are pretty much NACs or relays, however you want to program them. But um, yeah, that's inside. There's the CPU. I do not have a cover plate for that. Uh, transformer power and all your stuff going there. Let's just carefully close that. All right. So, as you can also see, I do have some new devices. Uh, here we have an Edwards uh, SIGA 278 that's been converted to conventional, so it's basically just a 278-1120. Um, here we have a Mircom 10-inch bell, figured kind of appropriate for this, and uh, an older Edwards smoke detector. Um, so, actually, I have a few more things before I go and set it off. Um, First of all, I just want to say that this C Quick Start CPU is not version 1.8, unlike the SDXs. This is version 2.5. Version 2.5 um, fixed lots and lots of bugs. I think this particular CPU is from like 2007, so it's it's relatively new. And uh, yeah, there it's just the 2.5 is better. Uh, anybody out there, if you have a 1.8 CPU, update it to 2.5, and it will last quite a lot longer. And uh, also we have these. These are five programmable buttons that I've programmed as uh, disable or bypass buttons. You have your bypass for zone one. It just goes into trouble. It's a toggle switch. Turn it off. And then you got zone two, three. You have and your audible signal bypass, which is NAX one and two. And you have um, visual signal bypass, which is three and four. Um, okay, so now that we have... Uh, gone through all that, let's uh, go ahead and activate the system, and the system will be on code 3, and the LED enunciation will light up. Yeah, I don't know why it 
does four beeps instead of three, but uh, yeah. All right, let's go ahead and reset with one hand. Yeah, these things are kind of hard to reset with one hand. All right. And uh, actually, we are going to just go ahead and re-alarm and because uh, it's a little faster. But uh, yeah, let's do that. thing <laughs> and uh, I do have an extra spot here in case sometime I want to add like a test station or something kind of like I, I did with uh, 4005 but uh, for now I just I, it's just labeled miscellaneous for zone 3 so now we can go ahead and reset and that will take about I think about 10 to 12 seconds it should clear and also, if you notice, um, uh, subsequent alarms do not count in the alarm history. It only counts the first uh, activation, which is actually kind of... I always nice. like to clear the history after I've used this for the day, because it kind of saves the CPU. Um, and also, one more thing I say before I go here is that um, new system test 2 is going to be either tomorrow or Monday, and uh, mini system test, uh, or the next mini system test uh, will probably be a little bit later just because I want to get system, new System Test 2 out of the way. But uh, yeah, this is uh, CJ9809 signing off, and we'll see you guys next time. Bye.